today I did the awesome Malona by Trixis Designs. So I did mine with vinyl. Uh, I've done lots of vinyl everywhere on the outside, but the back panel is actually suede, just to be different. Um, and then on the inside, I've done a cotton lining uh, with some slip pockets and all other kinds of crazy things. So if you'd like to see how to do this awesome, awesome bag, please stay tuned. So this will be the third time I've tried to start this video because people keep calling me and showing up at my door. But I have taken the pattern and on it, it's got these lovely little cut lines. You need to cut up and then stop at the thick line that goes across. This is very important to stop cutting here and not go all the way up. So it's got them on the pattern. And then it's also got this shaded area. And they're called E1, E2, A1, A2, etc, etc. So I have transferred all of that information onto the back of my piece. So you can actually see I've written A1, A2, B2, B1, etc, etc. I've also done the cuts, as you can see. So it's like very, very flimsy. And also, basically... It's also got cut marks, so you just do little notches, basically every time the fabric kind of angles a different way, but they are marked on your pattern. So you do need to chop those and then mark all of your pieces, mark your triangles, everything like that. So by putting all the, the numbers and letters, this is going to help us with our creating of the pattern. So with that said, I'm going to sit down and let's do this. So the first thing we want to do is go to A1 and A2, obviously start of the alphabet, start of the numbers. So what we do is we match up the lines on each side, like so. So you bring A1 to A2. So if you've ever made clothing darts, it's the same principle. So that side and that side are now lined up. So we're going to take that and then we are going to lift that. We'll bring that back to A1. So we're going to take this, this fold, which might look a little bit odd to you, but basically you should be able to almost pinch it like that. And then we're going to fold it to A1 and lay it down flat on top of itself. So we're going to take the little triangle and then fold it like that. And what that does is it gives us like our beautiful first little pleated bit. So I'm going to take some wonder clips and clip that down like so. So now I can let go and we've got our first tuck, I guess you could call it. I'm not really sure what we call it, but I'm going to call it a tuck for the purposes of this. So now we're going to go to B1 and B2. So you should have them marked, which should make this a lot easier for you. There's B1 and here's B2. So, if we crease that like this, that is going to go directly over each side, well not each side, but directly over where we've put our clips. So that now looks like that. So B, B2 stopped here, technically on the pattern, but if we fold that over like that, we now get B2. So, we want to fold that like so, and then we're actually going to start stitching this one. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these clips and grab onto all of the fabric to hold it in place, like so. We want to line it all up, line up the edges of the fabric, because... Obviously, that's why the cut's there. So like this. And then we're going to sew them together. So we're going to start with a zero seam allowance. So what that means is the easiest way to do this is put your needle in the down position. And then put the fabric up against the needle. So that we're going to start, we're not going to start in, we're going to start right at the edge of that fabric. So then we're going to stitch a few stitches. And then backstitch, obviously because we like backstitching. And then just sew all of that down. Like 
Now we want to stitch, let's have a look. We want to stitch all the way across all of this. So we're going to go all the way down to here. Oops. And then we chop that bit off. And now we've got our second pleat. Look at that. I like it. I like it. All right, so then we're going to do, we're going to fold B2 up to B1 and bend it on itself like this. So again, we're going to have another pleat. I sewed one little bit too far, but that's okay. So we want to now have this pleat. So I'm going to pin it. We're always making the fold face up towards our straight edge. So we've got a tuck and now we've got another tuck. So then we're going to take C1 and C2, which is here and here, like so, and add our clips into this. We're basically plaiting the fabric, right? So here's our C1 line, and here's our C2 line to here. And then technically, if you wanted to, that would be the fold there like so so now what we're going to do is we're going to again have our zero seam allowance at the start so we're going to start i'm going to push them out of the way and start with my needle down and then put it up against that back stitch uh, if you don't want to back stitch and my machine just ate that I don't know if you heard that or not I could hear it if it doesn't like back stitching which apparently mine doesn't in this instant what we can do is we start with our needle down and we can do two stitches manually and then lift up your foot and go back through the first hole and that's the same as locking it in so when your machines misbehaving there are ways around it so then we're going to stitch down along the edge. And then back stitch when we get to the end like so. Look at the mess that made at the back of mine. That's okay though, it's not in the way. And so then again, we want to take C, we want to fold it onto itself so it then comes up so it's going to sit like that so see our pleat that we've got going on now all right then oh also yeah no that's right that's right actually i think this was supposed to come Fold, 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 all the way to there. I'm just reading the instructions because I haven't actually made this before. Sew them together. Like that. Fold it upwards. And on to the next one. So D1 and D2. So here's D1. And here's D2. C1's also supposed to be up like this. So I forgot to pin that there. Right. C1. So then the idea is that this is now flush with that. So then we can take this piece and this piece is going to sew over those pieces. So we want to fold it, but we want to make sure that D1 and D2 are going on the right general direction. So the idea is now is that we're folding this and it's going to envelop that raw edge we just made like so. 
and then come down to there. So we want to make sure that both sides are lined up. And so now we're going to stitch that raw edge, making sure that we're capturing the previous fold in it, like so. So again, we're going to start with our needle down so that we're going to start with our zero seam allowance. Put the fabric, I'm probably going about, I don't know, a quarter inch above so that I can V on. If we start directly at the folds, so if we started directly here, we'd miss. So I'm just going up just a little bit and then starting here and then veering out. Making sure that everything's folded nicely. Zero seam allowance. We're gonna go two stitches and then we can go back through that first lot. And by stitching over them, it's locking them in place. And then back stitch when we get to the end. Pull it out, chop off our tails. And so then we're gonna take D1 and we're gonna fold it so that that again is giving us our beautiful crease. And then I'm gonna pin that in place. We'll clip it in place, I guess. So then we're gonna take our last one, E1 and E2. And again, we want to make sure that this fold is actually going to end up inside our seam allowance. Do -do -do, do -do -do, and then fold that over like so. And then E2 and E1, we want to line it up. So another good way, because we're on the last one, this should also line up with the edge. I'm just going to clip that there so it stays in place. And then we're going to fold it. So you probably don't need to put a clip there, but just to help you fold it to make sure everything's working out, we can do it like that. And so again, I'm going to start above the, the hole or the cut. And we want to make sure that we're going to get the raw edges in. Now if you're not good at veering on, you can actually start at the other end and veer off if that's going to be easier for you. So you can start at this end. Start here, needle down, couple of stitches and back stitch or again pick it up and go over them. Right. And then we're just going to veer off the end. See? And so again, we've enclosed all the edges and then we're going to take this piece and fold it at the E1 line. So all the ones, you're going to fold it onto itself. So then... I'm just going to tack that down and that should make a nice straight edge. And I just want this to stay where I want it to stay. Like so. And now you have your plaited, pleated front panel. I really like that. And then you can just kind of squash it a little bit. So these are going to crease all the way so you can just help it so basically where the clip is is just before there is where the point should be so you can just kind of do it with your hands to help it sit more flat i like it i really like that and so this is the first time i did it i think it come out great so now what I'm going to do is because this is a laptop bag and I want lots of stuff, I'm going to go and fuse on the back a piece of foam. So what that's going to do is that's going to kind of help it be the shape it's going to be. And by pressing it from the back, it's also going to help put in all of these creases so that it's going to sit flat, but it is still a 3D kind of an object like that. All right, so I'm going to go and put my foam on and then I'll be back.
I lied. I am not off to um, iron the vinyl or the foam onto the vinyl. Although I did give it a bit of a press just to help all of my pleats sit flatter. Uh, but I am going to take my top accent panel. Now I've done dragon scales because I wanted to. And I just want to make sure I'm going to put them the right way. So I'm going to check what I did for my side panels. So I've got all of my pieces, because they're all similar, um, I've got all of my pieces with the pattern piece clipped to it to make my life a little bit easier. So I've got a big pile of all my pieces. And I want to take my side... This one. Right, so I've done my um, side pockets and I just want to make sure I'm going to get the vinyl facing the right way. So I want my vinyl that way. Um, obviously if you don't have directional fabric it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm just going to line up this top edge and then stitch along. So we're going to back stitch at the start and then I'm just going to Grab the other end and line it up. So this is what I do when I don't clip. So you can clip it if you want to. By all means, go along and clip it. Um, but I actually just do it this way because it's quicker. So I don't need the clip. And then I'm going to back stitch at the other end. Chop off my tails. Throw them in the bin. And then I've got that. So I would like to stitch this down. Um, but I don't want to stitch it over this, so I'm actually going to stitch it onto the top panel. So I'm going to fold that up and over like this, and then change to a decorative stitch length, which for me is three and three quarters, or four, go all the way up to four, why not? Back stitch at the start, just to lock your stitches in. And then I'm stitching one eighth of an inch, just so that this is going to sit nicely. And then when we get to the end, we also back stitch. So now I've got my front panel and I can go and iron the um, foam onto the back. Now I've got a heat press so that's how I'll be doing it. So what I do is I put a piece of baking paper down, then this face down, and then I'll put this over the top and then I'll put another piece of baking paper so that this doesn't stick to the top and then squish it down. And then we can move on with the sewing. Right, so I have picked what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do the slip lining. Um, so again, I've got my pattern piece clipped to it just to make my life a bit easier. So there's two ways you can do this. I'm going to do it my way because I like my way. But you don't have to do it this way. The pattern does say to do it a different way where you stitch these together and then we put this on. Uh, but I think that my way is just as awesome and requires less sewing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my accent panel or my, yeah, my accent slip part in half just to crease where the halfway point is. Um, this crease is just going to make it easier. Then I'm just going to slot it over the top and clip it down. So you just want to put the fabric up to the halfway point and then just use some, any kind of clips. You can use wonder clips. You can use these kind of funky clips. Uh, because it's vinyl, I definitely would not put pins through it. That is not something that you want to be doing. Clip. And because also it's vinyl, we don't have to tuck the ends under. If you wanted to do this with fabric instead, just make sure it's long enough that you can tuck under a quarter of an inch at each end. Although it probably doesn't matter actually because this will go into the seams. So that's a very good point. All right. So now that that's down, I'm going to stick with my decorative 4mm size stitching. I'm going to do a couple of stitches forward and a couple back. And I'm just stitching 1 8 of an inch from the edge of the um, dragon scale vinyl. It's going to be a very busy inside. But that's okay. Still going to be cool. Alright. And so that is now your slip pocket. Done. One line of stitching. Boom. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to sit it on one of my main aligning panels. I'm just going to take one. I'm going to do the other one in a minute. 
Okay, so if your fabric is directional, make sure it's up. I don't know if this one is or not. I don't know, I like it that way more. So then I'm just gonna lay it on and I'm gonna baste it around the edges. So you just wanna do like an eighth of an inch stitching. As you can see, my cutting was not brilliant, so mine are not perfectly lined up, just at one end. Um, I was in a hurry when I was doing this because I anticipated that I was going to get this pattern video done like, I don't know, four or five days ago. But then I forgot it was Father's Day weekend and I didn't get there. Right. Slip pocket on. In, on, done. Pop that aside, and then we're going to grab our other lining panel, since I'm already onto those pieces. And we're going to take our accent panel. Now, I haven't actually officially finished cutting this, just in case you guys didn't know. So you cut out the inside. I'm just going to use my snips, which is probably really bad, and they shouldn't be cutting paper, but I'm apparently doing that anyway today. I'll just have to buy some more, I guess. So you just want to cut out the center and then I'm going to draw it onto the um, pattern piece and chop that out. And I use a craft knife to cut my center out because I find it easier. And I'm also going to use an erasable uh, friction texture. So mine is a pilot brand. You can get them from Woolworths and Safeway and office works and like any office supply store I imagine has something either exactly like this or something similar. You can also get texter versions and highlighter versions as well. So I'm actually thinking I can probably just score this and then I'll cut all the way through afterwards. So I'm just holding, yeah this is definitely going to work. So I'm just holding the pattern piece. You can also laminate these. I do have one laminated. I just didn't grab it. So now that I've scored that, it actually bends where I've cut it, which is going to make it super easy to just finish cutting all the way through. Um, if you didn't want to use a craft knife or you don't have one, see look how easy that is. It's just cutting through the backing. So lovely. You just want to make sure you're not going to go too fast and hard because you will cut past where you need to be and then you'll have to cut another one. Nobody wants to have to do that. You just bend it where it is and it just slides on through. I did this on camera because I haven't showed you how to do this yet and instead of doing a whole cutout video, I thought I'd just show you this bit. So if you score it with a knife, you can then just kind of cut the backing through it because it's not that thick. Even though this looks like a really thick, hard to work with vinyl, it's actually not. It's got a little bit of texture on top, but the back's just uh, felt. So it's quite easy to cut through. You could also do this with scissors if you want to. So cut in the center like we normally would and then work your way out to the edge. Okay, so we're nearly there. Look at that, I could rip the last little bit out. So that's my accent panel. Now I'm going to do it the way the pattern does, just to show you a different way to be able to do these things. So I'm going to line it up where I want it, which I would like it there. And while I'm still on my decorative stitch, I'm going to stitch the outside. Now I'm not going to back stitch this because I'm going to go in a complete circle so I can go through the first few stitches I do. But for those that don't like the other way that I do it, this is definitely another cool way to do your pocket accent panel. So we're just stitching around the edge and I'm going nice and slowly because there's lots of curves and I want them to look as neat as possible. You also want to make sure the need is possible if you're using a contrasting thread colour because then all your stitches will like very much show up. So I'm back to the start, so I'm going to go through two more and then back stitch. 
So just literally two stitches. Okay, so now it's on, but as you can see, we don't have a gap. So I'm just gonna come onto the back of this with some scissors and just cut wider than the accent piece. So we're gonna stitch over all of this anyway, so you're not gonna see this bit. So I'm just cutting slightly wider, and I'm not even doing this overly neatly. I'm just cutting wider than the zipper panel. And I'm very much hacking at this. So now we can see. Yay! So from the front, now you've got this. Alright, so I've got my zipper which is the length of my pocket and I've got my two pocket linings. So I'm going to put my fabric right side up and my zipper right side up and I'm going to stitch along the top. And then back stitch at the end, trim off my tails and do the same to the other side. So again, lining right sides up zipper right sides up and I'm not using a zipper foot because I don't think I need it and I'm just running my foot along the edge of the zipper we're not going to see that stitching anyway so it's not a really big deal okay so now I'm going to take my zipper pull and I'm going to just crack the zipper a little bit and push that on. So you want to make sure that it's even when you first put it in and then it should should just slide along like that. Look at that. Beautiful. So I'm going to put my zipper uh, pull in the center and I'm going to lie this over the top and again everything should just kind of get to the edge. So this is where I'm going to sit my zipper. Now if you have any kind of issues placing things, a little bit of advice is grab some double-sided tape, and I don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it just to show you. Put some double-sided tape here, so just along the edge, and along here. And that's just going to help to hold the zipper while we stitch it down. Peel off the backing. Okay, so now when I place this, it should just hold it in place, top and bottom. Also, if you make a mistake, it's not glue, you just peel it up and go again. Right, there we go. So now that's stuck down, we're just going to top stitch the square on the inside. Now I'm going to go back up to my nice decorative stitch length because uh, I want it to look pretty and match the other rest of it. Okay, so I'm going to start on a long bit just because that's where I want to start. And I'm going to move the zipper as I go. So when I get closer, I'm going to put my needle down and unzip. And then again, down, twist. Twist, needle, so I've got my needle down, I'm just going to zip the zipper back up so that I can do the rest of it. And then do the end and back stitch. And so now, when you open it, you've got like a nice lining. So now I can just stitch down the sides. So I'm going to seal off the zipper and just stitch the sides. Do the same to the other side. And then I'm going to just trim the pocket down because that looks really big. I possibly cut something wrong. But that's cool. Alright. Uh, scissors. I'm 
just going to chop this excess off straight across there like so. I'm going to leave the bottom of this open because that's where I've decided I'm going to turn the bag through later. Obviously not yet. So there is that piece. Now I'm going to grab my... I'm not even sure. What are we going to go with next? Zipper panel and side panels. Here we go. Got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. All right. Let's do our side panels because they're nice and quick. So I've got two lining and two outside. So I've done the uh, accent of the dragon scales because I think it looks really cool. So I'm going to top stitch the top edge. I'm going to put the fabric underneath so that the feed dogs bring it through nice and evenly. And I'm going to go back to a joining stitch. Back stitch. And then stitch all the way along and back stitch at the other end. I'm going to do the same to the next piece and I'm going to chain stitch it. So I'm just going to add it in and off we go. Then I'm going to chop this first one off. Crank up my stitch length to something more decorative and longer. Fold this over and top stitch along here. So I'm going to use an eighth of an inch to do my top stitching because that's what I like to do. Uh, if you're new to sewing, you might want to do quarter of an inch because it's easier to stay on the edge. And then chop off the other one and do the same thing again. I fold it under. I'm just doing it in sections. Uh, if you didn't use vinyl, you can definitely iron this to help hold it in place. Or I could have put some clips on it and let it sit for a while to really help that crease. Uh, but I'm feeling pretty okay about that. So there's my side panel, my side pockets. Uh, so I'm just going to pop them aside now that they're done. And I'm going to move on to my zipper panel pockets. Pocket, not pack, it's not pocket, I'm sorry. Zipper panel pieces. There we go. So again, I've got two lining and I've got two of an outside fabric that I'm using. Because I'm using a lot of different colours. I think I've got four different types of fabric on this. Just because of the way I felt like doing it. the beauty of being your own designer. So now I'm just going to put some uh, sticky tape or double sided tape, it's not really sticky tape, on the end of all of the pieces, but just one end. Now I've um, used a, an extra heavy non-woven on the top and I've used a medium woven interfacing for the underneath the lining pieces. Because I would like this to have a nice amount of structure. Okay, so now peel off all your double side tape bits. Maybe. There we go. Uh, uh. Don't be like that. And then I'm going to fold it under half an inch. So I line it up. I've got a ruler on here. You probably can't see it. And then I just fold it under so that all the pieces are going to be exactly the same size. So I fold under the half inch. So I want all the pieces the same size. So they should already be the same size. Uh, but if you cut them and they're not, now's the time to make them all the, the right size. I think I just missed the bin then too. Whoops. Because it's double-sided tape, I don't have to do any ironing. But if you don't have or want to use the double-sided tape, you could definitely go over to the iron and then iron over your half an inch. This one's a little bit more. See, I cut it wrong. Okay, beautiful. So now we're going to take our top zip, and I do not need this much. It's a bit excessive, even for me. So I'm going to chop it there. 
So I didn't chop the zipper teeth. I'm going to use my zipper scissors to chop my zipper teeth. And then I've got this little piece that I'll use for something else. Down the track, maybe an NCW mini. That would be lovely. Okay, so I'm going to crack the end of the zip just a little bit. I'm going to put it to a joining stitch length before I bend it. And then I'm going to bend the zipper on a 90 degree angle, like so. And then I'm going to tack it or baste it in place. So the first one's always easiest. The second one's harder because you want to match it to the first one. If they're not even, your zipper won't sit evenly. So I'm going to bend it down. I think I did a pretty good job at making that even. Line it up along there. Beautiful. So now this is the harder one because you don't want it to shift at all while you're trying to stitch it or it will make it the wrong size. I do a bit of back stitching to make sure it's going to stay in place. And then now that I've done both sides, I'm actually going to just separate the zip. Um, I find it easier to work with this way. So I'm going to grab one of my lining pieces. Now I've got my folded end at this end. So I want to take this piece of tape. So I want the non-sewn end on the same side as the folded end. And I'm going to line that up along the edge. And then I'm going to clip it in place because it's not going to sit there apparently. Awesome. So I'm just going to put probably four clips on. It's just to hold it in place, make sure it behaves itself. And then I'm going to take a top piece. Now, again, mine aren't directional, so it doesn't matter. And I'm going to lay it on top and then add it into the clips. Now, so long as your max is glorious, this piece should be exactly the same size as the other piece. So it all lines up. I want another clip in there. So it all lines up beautifully. So I want to stitch. I want to start or stop, depending on which side you've grabbed first, at the folds. We don't actually want to sew this part of the zipper tape. And then we're going to sew down a quarter of an inch down the non-folded end. So I'm going to get this way because whatever. And back stitch always. So you're going to you're gonna feel yourself sew over the zipper tape there. And then have your needle down. And now you want to run your foot up against the edge of the zipper tape. And again, you should be able to feel that. And then as we get to the end, you want to get right to the end and then back stitch. You don't want to stitch onto your zipper tape because you'll see it. Chop off your tails. Grab your zipper scissors and I'm just going to chop out part of this corner because it's very bulky and it's got a bunch of your zipper tape you don't need because you've already sealed it now. So then we're going to turn this out the right way like so. And then we want a top stitch as well. So we're just going to fold it over so it's even. And then I'm going to start on my fabric. Actually, I don't want to start there. I want to start down here on the edge. What am I doing? <sighs> All right. Back stitch. Stitch along. I'm going about an eighth of an inch, so then I want to get an eighth of an inch from here. And then stitch along this end. And then I'm going to pivot and stitch down this end as well. So now it's top stitched in place and we have one raw edge. Ta-da! Alright, so do the same to the other side. So this is all going to sit basically opposite. There it should. That's upside down. Hold that thought. There we go. Make sure your zipper teeth are facing up. I didn't think that felt right. I just did one that way. So I've got my fabric facing the same way, which means my zip gets attached to the opposite side. Or if you want to, you can flip it so that it's at the top. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. And then again, this one on top, add it to the clips, making sure that those ends are lined up beautifully. 
and they should all be the same because no matter what you cut we folded over that fabric to make it all fit so this time I'm gonna start at this end and I want to start right on the fabric do a couple of stitches forward and back to lock it in every time I say lock it in my brain wants to say lock it in Eddie from who wants to be a millionaire <sighs> Slowly going insane, it's fine. All right, trim off your tails. We should always trim them as we go. It makes your life way easier, I promise. Grab your zipper scissors and chop out the bulk in the corner, which should be a chunk of zip. If you're not cutting out a chunk of zip, I feel like there's a problem. Go back and check and then turn it out, pushing that corner nice and out. Now, if, again, if you wanted to, you could definitely iron this to make it all sit lovely. You can also, because I'm not starting on this end, I'm also going to just stick a clip there so it's going to hold it in place. Backstitch at the start. Needle down and pivot, making sure that our lining is also pulled out. Needle down, down the end, and back stitch. So with the back stitching, you only need probably two stitches. You don't need to do a lot. And now we've got a zipper panel, so it should be opposite lining next. So I've got my side lining pieces, and I've got my inner accent, which I have done with a dragon scale because, again. I want it to be super fancy. So, also, I forgot to mention before, this pocket you should also do on the outside. Uh, I think this bag actually had it on the outside, but I did it on the inside because, I don't know, I like inside pockets. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lining piece, or a lining front and back piece, and then a side piece, and join that together. like so and then I'm gonna take my other piece and I'm gonna join it to that take the next piece and join it to that so I've got like a nice long running thing and then I'm going to close the circle and stitch it back here So now I have this fun little loop. So I'm going to take my two accent panels and I'm going to put them right sides together and I'm going to stitch them and make them a loop as well. Making sure I back stitch and then I'm just going to chain stitch this other side in. So I'm going to line it up, stitch it on like so and now before I stitch this to that I want to place my zipper closure panel so the easiest way to do that is to just fold this in half where the seam is and then clip it and then do the same to the other side and yes I should not be using these to clip because every time I do I usually cut myself uh, we're going to do the same to these pieces as well, um, and then we just line up the clip lines. So, fold it in half, find the centre, and again, fold it in half, and find the centre. Alright, you can also just mark it with chalk if you don't want to cut it, that's fine too. And then I want to 
I always start with the zipper pocket side because I like my zipper to end in the same direction. But that's just me. I like my zippers to go in the same way. So I'm going to line up that center. I'm going to put a clip. And then I'm going to work my way out to make sure it's all nice and flat and even. And then do the same on this side. Right, so that's one pocket panel. And then we're just going to tuck the zip down because we obviously don't want to stitch that. And then we're going to grab the other side and line up the snip centers and do the same thing. So work our way out. Now, if you want, you can base this in place. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm just going to attach the other piece and stitch it all at the same time. Normally, I would base because that's like my MO, but this time, not so much. Okay, so then what we can do is if we fold this in half and join our seams, and if we work our way out, that is now going to join into that little clip that we did. This is the easiest way to do it, I think. Um, the other option would be to find the center of your side pieces and then put the seams there, but it's all much of a muchness. Now I want that to go in that way, so therefore this is the bottom that's going to join, and this should be my center, so I'm going to add that clip into there like that. And then just work my way out and just add it to those clips and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to do the other side. So we want to make sure that we haven't twisted this because uh, if you've got like a twist like this obviously it's not going to work. So make sure it's untwisted and then just add that in to that clip as well. Work our way out. Uh, the other reason we're doing it this way is because if you have sewn this seam allowance incorrectly, you're still going to be able to fix it without having to unclip literally everything. So I'm going to make sure that my zip is facing down so it's out of the way. And then we just clip and clip and then clip that. Oh, see, I've got not a, I've got too much there. So I can now just come along, do a little bit more, shove off the other bit. I think I printed something wrong. Ah, right. there we go. Look, beautiful, flat, even, love it. Other side. Oh, see, this side fits fine. I don't know what I did. Clip. I'm actually going to flatten this seam out open so that it's flatter to go over. It's also a really good idea to do if you're using a domestic machine. Okay. So now tuck it to the inside so it's going to be easier to stitch and then pick a spot any spot and we're going to stitch around making sure we back stitch and yes we're going around in a circle but I also don't want it to shift because there's lots of layers there and we didn't base it if we didn't base it I wouldn't have back stitched we just keep moving the bag around. And then back stitch when we get back to the start. I see a lot of tails I've clearly missed. So I'm going to get them now so that they don't annoy me later. So now you should be able to open this up and you've got your zipper pocket panel and then we just need to attach the bottom. Grab your bottom panel. I really enjoy clipping everything with these clips. I know that's really weird, but whatever. I'm cool with it. Truly am. Alright, 
So I'm going to add the bottom into just one side. And I know this seems like a really weird idea, but I'm just going to add it to there. And that's it. And that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave it flapping in the wind. The reason is, is now I'm going to be able to get the bag through there really easily and then I can do up the rest through the pocket panel. So that is now your lining all done. So let's move on to the outside. So I did my pocket panels like this. The pattern actually calls for you to stitch the bottom and then raise it up uh, so that this doesn't go into your base. But, apparently that's not how I'm doing it. I mean, I can. So all I will have to do, actually, I will do it the way the pattern says. I'll behave myself. All right, so you can just fold this back over. It's going to look weird because of the top stitching. So therefore, I'm going to clip it in place and then just stitch the bottom shut. And then we can pull it out and not top stitch it because the top stitching will also be the join it to the panel stitching. Okay, so I know it looks like a, an odd size. If you did it at the same time, it would be fine. Love a good chain stitch. Okay, so turn the pocket out through the side, um, and then you would top stitch. But obviously, we've already done that. So just to help this crease, I'm just going to add some clips here for a minute. You could also iron it from the lining side if you wanted to. Turn it through. So that's just going to crease. I'm going to go and add my foam to the side pieces uh, before I stick this on. And the reason is, is because I don't want to put creases in this. So I'm going to go add my foam and then I will stitch this on to here. And then we can move on to the front and back accent panel pieces. Slightly different position now compared to like two seconds ago because I dropped the camera. But these things happen. All right. We're going to measure up your pocket and then place it where it needs to go. You can also take these clips off now because you should have a nice crease um, or you could have ironed it if you used all fabric. So I'm just going to line up my pocket along the bottom and I want to stitch that in place. I'm going to back stitch and then stitch along and then back stitch. I'm going to do the same with the other one. So to there, stitch her on, back stitch, up we go. All right, and then I want to stitch the side panels to which I probably could have basted it in place but I didn't want to do that obviously so I'm just going to line this up and stitch up the side so if you want to you can even stitch it from the back so you can see what's going on uh, so I'm just going to baste this in place so I'm stitching one eighth of an inch from the edge on it unclip that one and then again we're gonna baste this down the side one eighth of an inch and then unclip the other one and then do the same to the other side now this one's gonna fight you a little bit more because 
um, you're now trying to pull the shape over to match up along the edge so that it can sit out at the side. Um, and that's why I don't try and do all three sides at once. I find it easier to do this way, but by all means, you can do it uh, the other way, where you clip all the sides and then stitch all three sides at once. I like to stitch from bottom to top, though, so that's why I do it this way. And so now, you got your pockets. Aren't they cool? Now, on to your strap connector parts. So you should have two of the long ones and four of the short ones. Take my pieces of paper, pop them under there. Okay, double-sided tape is your friend. So I'm gonna go ahead, I probably should have done this off camera, sorry guys. Double-sided tape all the way along. All of them, because that's just the easiest way. Okie dokie. Oops, dropping everything today. Then I'm going to fold both sides into the centre. Like so. Now this is going to look really skinny, but that's the idea. And then I'm going to stitch top and bottom one eighth of an inch from the edge to close that up. Um, I'm going to do them one at a time so that it doesn't pop open because this is a little bit uh, stiffer than normal vinyl because of all the texture and I don't want to have to keep constantly redoing it. But before you start, you just want to make sure it fits on the side of your um, D-rings. If it doesn't fit, you're going to need to cut it down until it does. Um, but super important that it fits in there. I should have backstitched at the start and then at the end. Voila. So then I'm just going to do this to all the pieces. Because this is a lot long video, we might fast forward. They're all done. Now we're going to grab our rings. So with these, you're going to want to make sure that the connection or the join is going to be in the up position. So we need to fold this over and then we need to make sure that it's the size that the pattern says. So we just keep folding this over until we reach the size, which I'm not telling you because I try not to give out pattern measurements as a general rule. Not my pattern to tell. So I'm going to do this to all four, uh, but I want to make sure that with the ring side up, I've got two going one way and two going the other. Um, so I'm just going to work backwards and do it this way. So I'm just using my ruler to work out exactly where to fold it, and then I'm just going to put two clips so that it stays there. Right. So now those two are going that way. So now I need two going the other way. Oh, look at that. I elbowed that perfectly. That was creepy. Uh, so then with the ring up again, and making sure that it joins at the back, that's another important thing. Because uh, we want it to be aesthetically pleasing. It's kind of the point, isn't it? Okay, so now I've got all four of them done. I've got two going one way and two going the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my one of my pieces. So this is my back. My back and my front are made of different fabric. I'm going a little bit crazy on how many fabrics I can squish into one pattern, I think. But it's still cool. I like it. All right. So then we want to measure um, the measurement that the pattern says, which I'm going to not give you again, because I just said so. 
And then I'm going to stick, line this up along that edge and pin it with two wonder clips. Why two? Because one, it can still pivot and move. Two is going to hold it exactly where I want it. And then I'm going to do the same to the other side. So I'm going to grab the other side one. So making sure that my connection is in the up position. Cannot stress this enough, otherwise you're going to see you join, which while it probably doesn't matter, it's still not as aesthetically pleasing as the other way. So I'm going to grab my front panel and do the same thing again. Making sure that my ring is facing up. It shouldn't be too difficult to do. Line them up like I did. You got one set, then you got another set. My rule is probably overkill, but whatever. I don't have a smaller one. I do. I've got my six by six square, but that's just awkward. All right. So I'm going to base them in place just so that they don't move while I'm doing stuff because that would really annoy me if it did. And little trickier things I do like to base in place. So now when I pull off the um, clips, it should still be in the position that you put it. If you put just one clip, it's got the option to swivel, which means it could also shift a little bit. Two clips is just more secure when clipping things. I say the word clip a lot. And again, the pattern has a back zipper pocket, which I also realized I did the zipper pocket wrong. You're meant to use one of those pieces per zipper pocket, not both of them for one. Um, for that, I do apologize. I'm just... Not 100% here today, apparently. All right. We're going to grab our center piece. And we're going to slot that in. Uh, and so the idea is, is that it's going to be firm. You want to make sure you've got an even amount on each side, which I do not. So I'll try a little bit less. Uh, you can also measure this if you want to. And the reason we're not stitching it down is because we're going to rivet it onto the main panel to give it extra security. But you also do want this to be quite firm, which is why we um, basted the side so that as I'm pulling on this, it's not going to shift and carry on. So that looks, that looks good-ish. And then I'm just going to add the rest of it into the other side. So you're kind of almost playing tug of war, but you just want it to sit flat. If you do it too loose, it's going to sag. And if you do it too tight, it's going to pull the sides in and then overstress your rivets. Um, I'm going to speed that in, bend it over, clip it, and then see if I've done approximately the right amount for the other side. So you kind of want to give it a little bit of a tug and then lay it down flat and make sure it's not overly pulling. It's just nice and firm. So there we go. Bunch of clips. So now we need our hole punch, which I now have a hole punch in a cam press. And then this one has got the rivet setting dies. So I've got two because they were on sale. So I bought another one. That may seem excessive, but whatever. And then I'm just going to bring all my uh, rivets over. Now you won't need double capped ones. So if you've accidentally one day bought single capped rivets and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do with them? Now's the time to use them. So what I want to do is I want to remove at least one clip so I can get in here. Then I'm going to remove the other one while it's sitting in here and punch the hole. So I want to be close but not too close. 
and then squish it down. And then I'm going to put my post in. Now, if you're using single cap rivets, you'll do your post up from the back and then clip that down. And then we're going to set that rivet. We're going to set and then do one and then set one and then do one, which for me is super handy that I've got two um, cam presses. All right, next one. So I'm going to hold it, then take the clip off, set it up. You want to get close, but not too close, and then squish. Now this is super sharp, so I actually don't have to push very hard on that. And then post, cap, other cam press, set. Ta-da! Look at that. It's looking fancy. All right, let's continue on. So again, under, line her up, squish. Uh, so this, this whole punch is from Green Beans Australia, for anyone that's going to ask me, because it's always questions I get in the um, comment section. Uh, I think it was about, it was less than $40 delivered, and that was express delivery. And I recently bought like a handheld one and I definitely like this one more. The handheld one broke on me in three days, which was obviously not ideal. I like this one. And it's not hurting my hand because quite often I had to squish with two hands. So anyone with arthritis, I highly recommend getting that. Okay. So that's one side done. So it's got four rivets in it. Now, if you are concerned, you could definitely put some more rivets along here. You could evenly space them. Um, you could also just do it for decorative purposes if you wanted to. So if you did this in all black, you could kind of do it in some stud look, and that would be really fun too. You could also use just cargo screws for this if you don't have a rivet press. Uh, or you just don't like rivets for whatever reason. You can definitely use Chicago screws. And they come in some decorative ones as well. I think I've got some studded ones just for funsies. So I could do like a cool skull bag and have studs all along the top. That would be fun. Now this would probably go a little bit faster if I turned the camera off and just kind of made a bit more of a mess. But I'm trying to behave. So again, I wouldn't want to do more than one at a time because I have it all lined up so if I let go it's going to shift and move which means your other holes might be incorrectly placed so it's just safer to do it one at a time um, another thing you could have done though so if you don't have two um, presses and you were going to have to keep switching all the time you could actually rivet the outside ones on and then come and do the insides um, so you could not put it on at the same time. So you could have riveted all the outside ones, done all the hole punching, and then done all the riveting, and then switch to just do this inside piece. Seriously though, this is such a hand saver. And no green beans does not tell me or pay me to say these things. I just don't know where else to get them apart from eBay. But most eBay things come from China and take a month. And I don't like waiting. I'm a very impatient individual if you haven't got that already. Okay. I think that looks wicked. So these will be where your handles attach to. So the fact that we've got the join at the top means that the handles will be hidden. Are the, not the handles, the joins in the, the rings. But some rings like these ones that I sell, um, they don't have a join. They're like super fancy. So it wouldn't matter so much about where the join is. All right, I'm gonna move all of that over here for a little bit. Because I need space. Okay, so now I've got...
got a front, a back, and two sides. We're going to join it the same way we did the inside, except the main difference for me is I'm actually going to clip this because I'm fighting all of this bulk while I'm trying to stitch and I would like a straight and even line. So I'm going to clip it. Um, as many clips as you feel is necessary. And then I'm going to go back to joining stitch length. So I was still on my decorative one from doing the top stitching. Oh, that's not ideal. My thread was um, shedding. That could be a multitude of things. If it keeps doing it, there could be a burr on my needle or my machine. Or sometimes that happens if you're stitching and it's too thick. Although that's obviously not the case here because I've stitched much thicker than this. So I'm just going to go back to where I can see it had a jump stitch. It also could be that I've incorrectly threaded my machine somewhere because that happens. Although I don't think that's what's actually happening here. Okay, one pocket panel. Then we're going to grab the next side. So we're going to go long, short, long, short. So just clipping along, making sure I'm catching everything. So my phone's a little bit wider at the moment. That could be from my dodgy cutting. I did end up cutting this bag at some crazy hour in the morning, I think. Ooh. Right, something's definitely wrong with my machine. It just created a bird's nest. So what I'm going to do, pull my bobbin out and check it. Sometimes it gets fluff stuck in it. Um, I'm also going to just make sure that everything looks like it's threaded correctly. Uh, the beauty of industrial machines is you can see the threading on the outside. So if something's amiss, you can usually pick up on it. I'm also going to cut off that bird's nest because I don't want it to affect the next lot of stitching I attempt to do. Alright, so I'm going to, instead of back stitching, I'm just going to do a few stitches and then go back and stitch through them a second time. Back stitch at the end. I don't know, it's working fine now. It could have just been a bobbin glitch that I fixed as I pulled it out. So now we've got this going on. We're going to add our next side. Try and make your clips go face the same direction. It does make it easier, I promise. Right. We're fine then. Who knows? I don't know why I just put those clips away. I'm about to need them again. Okay. So then we're going to seal up our rectangle. Or circle, depending on how you hold it. This is why we add lots of foam. We also, I do actually add foam to the bottom of laptop bags and can you hear that? I did I the last hear. side off camera because I forgot to hit record. I thought I leant over and hit it. I didn't. But you get the idea. So them all together. So I'm going to grab our base. If you want to put a uh, bag feet on your bag, now is the time. You also want to make sure that you do have foam on the base because it is a laptop bag. You want your laptop to be protected. So now what I'm going to do is I've actually 
inadvertently already marked the halfway point on here, but I'm also going to mark it on the other sides as well. So I'm just going to grab a texter and bend it in half like that and then put a line. So there's my halfway points on all four. So now we need to mark our halfway points on the bottom of this. So I'm going to join these seams here, bring it out and do a little clip. So you can clip or you can mark with a texter, it's or pen or pencil or whatever. As you can see, I like to switch it up. So I'm going to mark all four bottom edges and so that is where all of our marks on here will line up. So I'm going to start in the centre of a longer piece because that's where I like to start and we're going to clip it. I'm going to make the clips face the bottom panel because I find that easier. And then I'm going to stitch it, making sure that I leave um, a half inch gap. So I don't want to start right at the edge, I'm going to start about half an inch in. So you just want to kind of push this out of the way. You may also want to put some base stabilizer under here. Um, mine's under the foam. You can put it over or under the foam, but I suggest under. And then I'm going to line that up and do the opposite long side. Again, making my base, uh, my clips face the base or bottom of your bag. like so and then we're going to again push the bag over out of the way start half an inch in like so now before i stitch the other shorter sides i'm going to take a pair of scissors and just make a little snip um where the stitching stops i'm actually probably back like one or two mil just a little bit so what this is going to do is this going to help when i try and put this side in it's going to flex here um so now when i line this up it actually sits in there better i should also point out that you should make your um stabilize a piece uh, within your seam allowance because otherwise this is going to be very very hard to cut and turn and all kinds of crazy things so i'm going to pin both edges i like that and then i'm going to push this down out of the way like this and then stitch the bottom shut so you want to do a couple stitches and then back stitch. I also just think I worked out why my machine's playing up. It's time to change my needle. Back stitch at all the ends. And then I'm just going to chop off the excess at the corners we don't need that much in our bag but chopping off this excess it's going to help the bag sit nicer too i'm just going to chop it off anywhere go to town as long as you don't cut your seams you should be right Right. 
throw that in the bin. I'm also going to trim down these top bits up here. Like so. Uh, that's going to help uh, with top stitching later. And it just eliminates bulk, which makes it easier to sew, especially on a domestic machine. Or one that's been temperamental like mine. Okay. So we're going to turn our lining right sides out. Like so. And then just point the, the zipper flaps down. Now, I, you've noticed I haven't put the zipper on. I do it at the end because it's just less thinking. So I don't join it because I don't have to. Now, what we're going to do is we want to line up the sides with the sides. So again, we're just going to make a mark by folding it in half. And then I really should not be using them. And then you want to decide which side you want on the front and the back. So I would like my zip to finish this side. No, wait. This side. That way. It probably doesn't necessarily matter. It's just something you may want to think of. So I'm going to shove all of the lining into the bag. Making sure that my zipper flaps are pointing down so that they're out of the way. And then I'm going to line up this side seam with our side clip that we just made. And I'm going to make the clips face the inside of the bag. Like that. So then I'm going to come and do the opposite side because that's what I like to do. Again, clips facing the lining side of the bag. Like that. And then, if you put your fingers in those two corners, that should fit nicely in between all of there. And then, we just add some clips, as many or as few as you want, to clip this in. Lining corner, corner, one, two, three. I actually probably don't even need that many clips. So now I'm going to sew it with the lining side up, which is why we put the clips that way. And I'm just going to stitch all the way around. Um, and back stitching at the start. So you just want to go slowly. And always stop with your needle down before you rearrange the bag. Uh, if you stop with the needle up, it's more likely to move and then you're going to have a wonky top edge. Always needle down. Sometimes I even have to manually crank because I miss with my foot. And that's a lot to do with how responsive your machine is. So with my uh, rotary motor, the one that made the noise, my machine doesn't stop the second I take my foot off. It kind of slows down. I mean, it only takes probably an extra one second or so, but that is a big difference. And then backstitch when we're back to the start. So now to turn your bag out, we literally left the whole bottom open. So this should be really, really easy. Oh, actually, for domestic users, and I'm going to do it just to show you. For anybody that's doing this in a domestic machine, you want to chop out the bulk in the corners. So you just kind of want to make a little V or a U and just chop out that little bit of bulk because top stitching will be much, much easier if you do it. I promise you. But we're not chopping a lot. So it's close to the stitches without actually cutting them. And so you just kind of V in and then turn your scissors once you get there and just snip straight out again. One, two, three. I'm going to do a four because I've done three. So you go in and then just kind of out. This is going to help with your top stitching. 
Um, if you forget it and you're on a domestic, you're probably going to want to turn your bag back out the other way. So it's always nicer to remember before you do such things. Ugh, I love this bag. I also like that I use so many different types of vinyl. So that I've done that there and then I've got a different coloured base. That was obviously deliberate and I really like the results. All right, so that's that bit. And then we turn that under and in like so. Now, if you've got some of these handy dandy pliers, you'll probably still want to apply pressure to the corners when we get to that. Uh, I'm not quite there. I'm just making sure that the bag is all sealed and nice before I stitch the bottom of this bag closed. So I'm just going around making sure I haven't missed anywhere and nowhere's like super wonky or anything. But that so far is looking pretty good. So now I'm going to reach through my zipper pocket panel, which I made incorrectly. I'm not even going to lie about that. And then I'm going to grab the lining, so this piece and this piece, and pull it through the hole. Okay, so now we want to stitch, we don't want to, we want to pull all of the lining through. I know it looks like a bit of a mess, but just bear with me. I promise this is going to be worth it. So now we're going to take this opposite side and we're going to stitch it. When we open that out, there is our opposite straight side. So we want to stitch that to our other side. So I'm just going to line it up and clip it. Now the reason I'm clipping it is because it's going to be otherwise quite difficult. It's going to struggle with you a little bit. So the idea is, is we're joining this piece here to this piece here, but right sides together, All right? And then we'll do the side short bits, but we want to do the long bits first, um, because we just do. We also want to make sure that we're not getting our pocket piece. So this is our zipper pocket, so we don't want to stitch that. We just want to stitch this edge and this edge together. Just kind of got to maneuver it out. So again, not that piece, not our zipper pocket pieces, edges, just our outside edges. So that's the pocket piece and that's the pocket piece and that's our edge and that's our edge. So there, there, edge to edge, clip. And then you can just move along the line pulling both the fabrics tight and then add a clip. And that's just going to hold it in place so you stitch the right pieces together. Okay, so then we're going to stitch that shut. Same way as we did our base. You want to start a little bit off the edge. And then stop just before the edge as well. So then we're going to take our short ends and again grab some clips clip it down and stitch across there making sure that we backstitch at both ends
throw those bits in the bin and then we're going to do our other short edge and this should seal up our base. Like so. Trim off all of our tails. I've got a little bit of extra fabric there, so chop it out. Like so. And then you push the lining back in. And the bag is now shut. But it was very, very easy to turn. If you tried to turn that whole bag through the pocket, I definitely think you would have struggled. So now I'm going to just pull the pocket out. Or attempt to just pull the pocket out. And I'm going to fold the raw edges in so that we can't see them. Because I do have a little bit of leeway to do that so we get to our side seam and we fold both the edges under and then we're going to clip it now the reason this looks like it's a little bit more difficult is because it is and it's because i sewed my zipper panel to the whole side panel because those panels were supposed to be one per zipper and i did two per zipper which means they were twice as big but also twice as tricky that's what I get for trying something new botch it the first time it's usually the way although on a whole this is the first time I made this bag I think it's coming out quite nicely but don't feel bad if you mess stuff up I just messed it up in this video and I didn't delete it out I left it there to make a point I could have unpicked all of that and then just deleted it and you'd be none the wiser Just clip it along. I'm just folding under probably about a quarter of an inch and then clipping it shut. And the reason I'm using more clips than I normally would, again, is because the ends are going to try and give me grief. So if I pre-clip it all, it's got no chance to. Because I am smarter than the zipper panel and it will not defeat me. And then just tuck that under. I know it doesn't look straight uh, because of the way it's sitting, but it is. It's fine. Tuck that under. All right, let's do this. Stitch a couple, back stitch a couple, and off we go. I always stop with the needle down readjust my piece of fabric, needle down, clean up my clips as I go so they don't get in my way, back stitch, boom. Now I'm going to top stitch this bag because it's going to help it sit flatter. Uh, if you're scared of top stitching or you don't think your machine can handle it, that's fine. Um, what I would do is I would come along and clip the crap out of this edge, which I'm going to do anyway, but then I'd leave it sit there for a few days so that it creases it nicely. Or alternatively, go ahead and squish it with these, which I will also be using today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to roll it in my fingers like this and make sure that that seam is directly on top and then clip it down in place. like this and I still don't put the zipper end on yet that is a deliberate choice I don't do it until it's literally the last thing I do unless I do handles last so I'm, I'm at a seam so I'm just gonna squish it with these pliers because it's gonna make it a little bit flatter not that it's overly bulky because we cut most of the bulk out and then I'm also gonna squish here because that's where the seam for the inside accent piece was uh, so it's a little bit bulkier, again, because I used vinyl. If you didn't use vinyl, you possibly don't need to squish it. Now 
Now my stitch length for my top stitching is going to be four, uh, and I'm going to do it one eighth of an inch from the edge. If, however, you are new to top stitching, my suggestion would be to do a quarter of an inch from the edge because you're less likely to slip off. Um, and because if you've done it the way I've done the bag, there's vinyl, you can't really unperforate vinyl. You don't see it in cotton fabrics, but as soon as you punch a hole in vinyl, it's kind of there forever. Unless you want to sit and heat it up and melt it and squish it with your fingers. But even then, it never looks right. I mean, it helps. I'm just going to squish this last seam. Um, these pliers I got from eBay. They are a leather tool plier because I know a lot of you are going to ask. They weren't expensive. I believe they're on Amazon in America. Okay. So, now we're up to top stitching. If you've got a cylinder bed machine like me, I would actually go and top stitch this on that machine over. You can't really see it, but this one here has got a cylinder arm, so it's easy to put the bag through. Um, but I'm obviously, we're doing a tutorial on this bag on this machine today, so I'm going to use this machine to top stitch. But it definitely makes it easier on the cylinder arm. Now I don't actually want to start there. I want to start near a corner, but not on a corner. If you start in the middle, no matter how insignificant your join is, you're possibly still going to see it and notice it. So if you start near a corner, it's going to be less obvious. So top stitching is one of those things I definitely take my time with. There's no hurry. Um, and everybody will notice. So just think about that and slow down. And again, you can just skip it. You just need to make sure that you squish this bag down really, really well. You could also glue the insides together before you turn it out. And then so like leave it overnight gluing. Always stopping with my needle in the down position and I'm constantly pushing that zipper panel out of the way so I don't stitch it. So I don't know if you can hear my machine, but there's not really any difference when I run over a seam because I've squished them or because I was talking too much. You know, either or. But I couldn't even feel a difference. So I went over two stitches and then I back stitched and then that's all I've done. I've chopped off the excess but I've left like a tiny smidgeny bit so that I can melt the end down. Uh, and if you're gentle you can lightly touch it and just push it down so you can't really see it. So there we go. So that's almost the bag done. We still need to do our end. So now's the time you can put your zipper pull on if you want to. If it's annoying you, do it now. Uh, but I'm going to do my handles. So I'm doing a vinyl accent on top of a different vinyl fabric because I decided that that wouldn't be fun to carry. So I went with the same vinyl that I've done on the base, which is a different color from my accent panel. Again, because I wanted to try and use like as many things as possible apparently. It wasn't even that. I just got super inspired by all the colours. And in the, you can't necessarily see it, but this is very copper and brown, so it throws the two tones nicely. And I don't have any copper um, vinyl, but that deep burgundy colour worked really nicely. Um, and before you ask, the burgundy I got from an upholstery guy, and the dragon scales comes from Spotlight. And I think someone in America previously has found where to get it from. Uh, so if you join my group and scroll through, you will find somewhere someone has found it. So I'm just folding both sides into the center. Uh, you'll notice I didn't draw a center line. It distracts me when I'm trying to do it this way. So I find that I'm better at doing in the center without drawing a center line, which I know sounds counterproductive or intuitive or whatever, but it just... It just works for me. Okay, 
So then I'm just going to take this piece and I'm going to lay it on top, on top of the join so that we're not going to see it. Now, if you don't think that you can hold this evenly, double-sided tape down the center, and then you can just stitch the sides. I'm fairly confident I've got this. So my top vinyl accent strip is half an inch wide. And then I cut my other vinyl bit two inches because they are one inch D-rings. If you've got different size D-rings, you need to cut different size strapping. Just be conscious of that. Down, and I'm going to do the end as well because I did it at the other end. Um, and then I've got this little extra bit, so I'm just chop it off, and the strap is done. So it's like fun on that side. You've got your stitching on the back. You do a second one, and then attach it, and then I've got to find the little end piece I had for the zipper, which I have cut, and I don't know where it is. So you know what, I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to finish this, and then we're going to put the straps on. Put on my stuff, um, I've got a texter and a ruler. So I'm just going to measure half an inch up from the end, and then one inch up from that notch, and that's going to be my holes that I'm going to punch for my handle. Now if you've used the chunky hardware, you'll need to do one and a quarter inches up, or you won't get the fabric around, and you'll overstretch it, and they're more likely to break. So I'm going to take my hole punch, line it up, punch it down. So this should be between all of your stitching, so you shouldn't have any issues with accidentally punching a hole through your stitching. Uh, if you are, may I suggest some fray stopper. And then we're just going to thread this up and over and then I'm going to grab one of my things pop it through the back and then through the front now again you could use single cap rivets because you're not really going to see the back of this because of the way the handles are done so that's pretty much yeah I'm going to use double caps because I always do but you could get away with single caps I reckon if you accidentally bought the wrong lot so then we're just going to bend the top out of the way and clip that down. And then we want to, I always bring this out and then twist it round. And then we're going to go through the other side. I'm going to grab a post, pop it through the back, stick it through the front. And I always like my handles on this way um, with my detail that's going to sit on top when you carry it. But obviously you can do whichever you prefer. So then I'm just going to maneuver the bag out of the way to sit this in the well. Squish the rivet. Um, and I did the other handle already. So we're nearly, nearly, nearly finished. So that's now the front. You've got handles. We just need to add our zipper and our zipper tab end. So what I've done is I know how wide my zipper tape is. So what I have done is I have cut it as wide as the zipper and then twice as long as that. So this will end up being a nice square. So I'm going to use one of my, um, I think I call them smooth criminal because I think I'm funny. <gasps> I can't just name things normally. I don't know why. It's an issue. All right, I'm going to use my zipper jig which I'm not going to move over because I have done a video on how to use it and it's currently got like nine rolls of double-sided tape on it. So you want to feed it on evenly and then you want to zip it up and make sure that when you zip it up, it zips up evenly. If you haven't done it evenly, pull the zipper off and just do it again. I'm also going to melt the ends of this so that it doesn't misbehave. And then... I'm going to come back to the sewing machine. I've put a piece of double-sided tape down the center already. 
And then I'm just going to fold it pretty much in half and then slot the zipper tape until it butts heads with the end like that. And then I'm going to stitch around the edges with the same decorative stitch length that I've done for everything else. So you can kind of start wherever. I'm going to start here and then pivot. So I'm doing about one eighth of an inch from the edge and I'm just going to maneuver this around. Needle position down, maneuver again. So you don't have to swing the whole bag around. I don't know if you just noticed, but I definitely did not do that. Um, and if you want to, you can either add another rivet in the center here, or you can do a crisscross if you like the look of that, or however you want to do it. That is the bag all done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, and I'm sorry it took so many days to get it up, but hopefully I will be able to do another one tomorrow. All right, bye guys.